<laughs> I've been wondering Same. about your uh, your past because you used to be a pro-choice advocate, and now you're leading the largest pro-life movement in the country. <laughs> what happened? What what caused you to change your your views on abortion? I'm sure there's a there's a story <laughs> behind that. Well, I went from being the smartest person uh, in, on the planet, in my self-estimation, to having a modicum of uh, humility. I'm still working on, on that move. But no, I, I think that that move from uh, uh, as a young woman thinking that self-mastery and being the master of everything in my universe was the most important thing um, to becoming pro-life is a journey that I think a lot of uh, women and men uh, have been on in the last several decades. And those are some of the untold stories. We hear the, the difficulties. We hear the generational change that gives us pause very often. Um, I'm 57, so I'm, I'm seeing like the generational change a little bit more poignantly from being born in 1965 and seeing the changes through that time. But I'll just say this one thing. So yes, when I was uh, when I was young and I was very uh, very involved in politics, it was exciting and I was a, a free market uh, libertarian. Thought that the social issues were a burden on any Republican ever running, uh, and that the smart thing to do would be to embrace libertarianism and only without the moral underpinning that many libertarians also um, uh, embrace. Uh, and, um, and I was, I went to Duke and I was a chairman of college Republicans, you know, that was what, what I was very interested in doing. And I totally set myself up for, for, um, changing by true, by freely expressing um, my views. And I met people who were very smart, very informed, not judgmental but gave me their best arguments. I went from being pre-med to being a philosophy major in that period of time before I graduated because I just kept getting, um, you know, in that urgency that that age feels is necessary to get all the questions answered now about for my whole life, I've got to answer these questions now. I moved from knowing everything to thinking the questions that I have left set aside are the most important ones. And I could not get past uh, the question, what is that thing that is being taken out of a woman's body at that moment? If it's the moral equivalent of an appendix or a appendectomy, like an app in an appendectomy, then it's not a big deal. And we are the stupidest movement that ever existed. <laughs> that we would get involved in somebody's health in such a way that we would say no, no appendectomies, no hysterectomies, <laughs> nothing like that. But if this is an actual person with perhaps moral standing, just as we all have, then you better at least pause. And the pause was exactly what happened to me. I paused for long enough. I would have had an abortion, and I even planned to have one when I thought I was pregnant. In a minute, the pause is what happened to me, and I believe the pause to really self-reflect and, and be allowed into a conversation, and, and ultimately for me a spiritual conversation as well, that tested the theory, my body, my choice. And um, when my mind changed, it, uh, it, it was because of the something that I just could not argue against anymore. It was a matter of self-respect. Like, I can't even make this argument anymore. All these sophisticated things out there, I put them to the test and put other smarter people to the test, and it just didn't make any sense anymore. So, um, so I changed, and I really, as you my guess, I fell strong. <laughs> I fell big. And, um, and when I knew that I had been so wrong, I, I used my skills that, um, that, I, that were medium in, uh, uh, medium in acuity <laughs> uh, to really start building a, um, uh, the political arm of the pro-life movement, which I thought was the most important thing missing if we were going to overturn Roe versus Wade.
you know, I, I really appreciate that story. And I think it's so interesting that back in the seventies, a lot of the argument was over the science. Mm -hmm. And now the science has proven that you have human life right from the moment of conception. It's nothing but a human being and it's mm -hmm. alive. What's concerning to me now is the argument has shifted from, well, it's not really uh, a conglomeration of cells. We, we can acknowledge that it's a human life. However, the choice of the mother still prevails. And in, in mm. some ways, I find that argument even more concerning yes, than, than the justification agree. was given before. But Yeah, I think it's the most dangerous argument that you can make, that the truth doesn't matter who speaks is what matters. That you have to have some sort of standing given to you by who knows who to speak to anything. And that that somehow, when the argument of the day is uh, um, who gave you the, the authority to speak. It could be your gender, it could be, but it's not really even gender anymore. Like you, Kelly, you and I, and, um, and I, I think all of us here, like we get put in places where, uh, involuntarily by others that uh, where, where we are told because you're in this category of person whether it's your fate it's your gender it's your um, your political who you voted for your arguments do not matter when you think about how we resolve issues in this country and we have on human rights battles since the beginning given the tools that the founders gave us without a king, but with just ideas in the public square, mm -hmm. the most dangerous thing to that gift is that only certain people are able to speak because of the result of their opinion, uh, because of the syllogism that ends, like you don't even look for the reasons, you just look for uh, where they ended up. And that's why our universities are in such a, a total disaster. But one thing I'm just so emboldened by and so encouraged by is that the real people, the real families, the children <laughs> of our country before they get indoctrinated, like they know the real people mm -hmm. in real America, most of it really understands, uh, really understands the basics of living the good life, understands first things, what comes first and then what mm -hmm. comes politics does not come first right and and the politics of abortion only comes out of something that has nothing to do with politics all to do with science and if you have faith there are many reasons to be pro-life but if you have faith you know that is uh you know that there's only one way that god sent that that anyone is sent into the world to do the things that only each one of these children can do, and that is through the the gift of the Holy Spirit, like that, and for us to stand in the way of those those children that were sent for specific purposes that no one else could fulfill, no one else will fill those purposes, um, means that we'll be stuck for a while. That's right. Because That's they right. they were sent for to solve things that we can't solve.